I hate to be going political, but Herschel Walker, who I remember, my God. Herschel Walker, yeah, that's a hero. Welcome to the podcast. Uh, today, I got a guest on. His name is Mon Carter, world-renowned musician on the Willie Monroe Records. He is a uh, single, Don't Worry, is out now. He is a self-proclaimed face of Arlington, and he got stories for days, music for days, ideas for days. Uh, I'm going to let y'all give it up for my personal friend, Mon Carter. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm reflecting on my growing up. I ain't going to bring that far back up, yeah. but I want to bring Herschel Walker. Yeah, yeah, we're going to bring back Herschel Walker. So for y'all who don't know, Herschel Walker is a politician who, uh, he's a Republican from Georgia. He's a perfect part of what we was against. Mm -hmm. That's what I was going to go to. I was going to go back there, but he was what we grew up looking at a person like this because we had people like this. Like it's what? Like, was, like Herschel Walker. Like a clown. He don't think he, uh, he, don't, he wished. I, I love your nationality. Mm -hmm. Love your nationality. This man here is the kind that wished he was something else that he's not. You can hear it in him. You mm -hmm. can see it in him. You and seen the video that they posted a lot of him? He was uh, talking at a rally. He was like, uh, so I heard everybody was called me a coon. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm from the country, and you know the smartest out of there is a coon. Man, you a fucking liar. Man, nobody says that. Nobody says that. When they do a brain scan of his brain, mm -hmm. and he's long gone, mm -hmm. they're going to find out he has so much brain damage in his head. And that's the problem. The Republicans have said it, that he has brain damage. Yeah, they yeah. have said it. Yeah. They know them hits and hurt it. I thought they endorsed him. They endorsed him knowing he got brain damage. Like they did that's Trump. the part I'm looking at. They could have endorsed any candidate mm -hmm. that wasn't mentally hurt like this. Mm -hmm. And to take advantage of this man and his family trying to tell him they're doing it. Everybody's telling him they're doing it. And he just like caught off in a twilight zone because he's mentally challenged, he just, he knows it. Mm -hmm. And they got his uh his opponent, Democrat, uh Raphael Warnock. I think he's in the league right now. He uh he was saying like, yeah, y'all can't ignore Herschel Walker's private life. He's running for office. That man paid for three abortions, even though he's uh anti abortion. He uh he has several uh what's it called? Illegitimate children that he keep uh ignoring and or denying. He had several mistresses, and all this was during the campaign. And they still want him to run for president. Not president, but run for office. Some could have gone up to one of them here, maybe more than one. Mm. Done threatened the police with violence. Here's what gets me. I don't care if you're independent, Democrat, whatever. I don't care if you're red, blue, black, green, Asian, Hispanic, whatever. Yeah. Right is right, wrong is wrong. They have put themselves where he done repented through God. This is what giving Christianity a bad name, that kind of stuff. Yeah, because you can't believe do it. God. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, forgiving God, yes. But he also is a strong God. I'm trying to speak for God. Repenting yeah. through God for the whole behavior. You think you running for office is repenting? They ain't showing no press and no team, taking no picture on his knees, praying to God with no Bible in his hand, going to leave the church. Said it. Yeah. yeah, he repented because he's running for office. He would have kept doing it if he wasn't running for office. I mean, he didn't get caught. I'm Look, amazed that uh, something uh, here in my life is old now. We're watching television now. We're seeing uh, ice yeah, steady, yeah, disintegrating yeah. ice. Uh, 20 story ice glaciers. Disintegrating. Glaciers just disintegrating. That's crazy. These yeah. things have took millions of years to build this disintegrating. Uh, we jump in the subject. Mm, and you yeah. know the problem with that? <clears throat> you know, and we can't stop it. Bacteria that's been caught off in that stuff for years. Been yeah, right yeah. Now. Do you believe in climate change? Huh? Do you believe in climate change that that we causing global warming? You're looking at it right there. Mm -hmm. The Republicans, your favorite group of people, don't believe that we are doing it. They think that Earth naturally warming itself has been doing it for years. And you, and you look and see the fact like that here in Texas, they says it. Oh, they trying to bring this new green deal. We're about gas, mm -hmm. and everybody say gas is destroying the Earth, destroying the world. And this governor steady bragging about gas. We understand. Mm -hmm. Gas has been here to do a lot of things. People making money off of it. Yeah, we do. Like, uh, you talking about oil, or what you talking about like uh, the what's it called? Uh, fossil fuel. Yeah, fossil fuel. Fossil yeah, fuel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We understand that cost we came through technology, mm -hmm. and it took us to this far. And these rich people want to keep making their money, like with the coal miners. I've never been in a coal mine. I'm just in, people that working there and lost their lives doing it. The same clothes that we use in the barbecue with. Yep. They use it for their home. Mm -hmm. People have gave their lives to do this. What they gonna do now? They don't know nothing else to do with this. That's the 
that's sad, but progress must come. Uh-huh. That's killing the earth. You kill the earth, everybody dies. Yeah, that's why they're trying to make uh, humans an interplanetary species. They're not trying to fix earth. They're trying to move to Mars. Like they ain't. Your boy, you know who headed that? Your boy, Elon Musk. Hmm. Your boy, Elon Musk. One thing Elon Musk and the rest of the world will find out. Mm-hmm. When you run, try to run somewhere away from something, something's coming with you. No yeah, matter you where go. you go. Like, like how you put that. Uh, like how you put that. Put that. And we're jumping subjects, and I really like it. So I'm going to jump to another one. The yeah. Supreme Court Justice. Oh, it's been crazy. Oh, it's a lot of uh, Republicans that's on the Supreme Court Justice. But they done did something that I'm so happy for. Well, they did. Uh, and don't take this as racist, what I'm saying. I'm just mm-hmm. saying, well, I feel it's real. Mm-hmm. No matter who Trump put in office, when this black lady, oh, have you yeah, ever dealt with a black uh, woman? Uh, 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 oh, Miss okay. Brown, huh? Tell me, Miss Brown, what's her name? Uh, K- 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 I don't want to say her Brown. name wrong. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't want to say her name wrong either. Yeah, but when you Ms. put, Brown. I, my mama black, your mama black, my grandma uh, black, my your grandma black, my auntie you, black, your auntie, black. all our family black. No matter what we do in this world, you get a strong black woman. And put her in the mix of all the mm-hmm. racist mm-hmm. ass people. Mm-hmm. She, she gonna speak stand, her mind. Exactly. She gonna stand ten toes behind what she got to say. I love it. Thank you. And I hate the fact that it took up to Biden to do that because Barack Obama could have did that. But you know they were still they so yeah they were still cold on Condoleezza Rice being up there. They thought that you know what I'm saying a black woman in politics is already done. When I say how times have changed or mm-hmm. not, this is a or not they didn't want to happen. Mm-hmm. This black you know black man in there he the well we got a black man now. Well, let me stop. He ain't black. <laughs> oh, about Barack Obama? Uh, uh, in the Supreme Court. Oh, yeah. That, Supreme that, yeah. yeah. yeah Sorry, that, Clarence. The Republican. Look, yeah, they if just I change his name, Louis, Clarence, the uncle. They <laughs> got a new Republican black elect, uh, Clarence somebody name. Uncle, uncle, and, uh, wait, and, uncle yeah. what? It started with a T. Uncle yeah, who? Yeah, Uncle Thomas. So he ain't black. So we got but, our first black. But to be honest, he didn't really come off as an Uncle Tom. He was one of the Republicans that I listen to speak she because he said the only color that matter is red, white, and blue. She we're not focused on identity. Thing. We're focused on policies. And I get that. He you said, said Clarence Thomas says that? Uh, that. That one fella, the new dude with the ashy face. Was that oh, the white guy? Nah, the black dude. Remember uh on the Supreme Court justice? Yeah, the new elect. Oh, Ava one black or Ava two blacks on the Supreme Court justice, Clarence Thompson and that new lady. Clarence, how, how long Clarence Thompson been on there? Too long. Nah, nah, this is a new dude. This is hey, a new dude. Uh you ain't just see the man on TV. He's been he's probably on the state Supreme, not yeah. on the federal Supreme. Because they have one black on the federal. That's uh, Clarence Thomas with his wife that tried to help overthrow the government. I know who you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know who you're talking about. His wife's he's black yeah. in color. She had to text messages to the people that, oh, we. But did here we go. Get, huh? Did she ever get reprimanded for that? I haven't kept up with it, but I don't care. We're going back this year. This black woman that's on the Supreme Court Justice, all that bullshit that y'all do. Y'all can vote, thing. But y'all got Good, like with the one that died, uh, 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 on top of the black guy that died, said it's good to start good shit. Uh-huh. Uh, that died a few years ago, it's good to start trouble, good trouble, uh-huh. good trouble. Uh, the black activist, now he was a congressman from Atlanta, from Georgia. What was the quote? Uh, it's good to start good trouble, getting good trouble. Oh my god, Lewis, Lewis. Congressman Lewis. Congressman Lewis. Yes. Oh, it's good to get good trouble. Uh, is a term he said, I start good trouble, something like that. But with this black woman, oh, she gonna, like say, 10 toes down? All that bullshit that they do? She finna handle that. Some of them finna, look, it's some women on that thing. Mm. You think them women ain't finna vote with her? Over the motherfucking men? I don't care what they say. Yeah, some of the men finna look at her and say, we're gonna leave this black woman alone. Cause she's finna bring That look, that's reasoning. a documentary. Oh man, you just put me on. John Lewis, I John remember Lewis. him. He was an activist. He was yes, sir. I remember him. Good I got trouble. a documentary about him. It's called Good Trouble. It's on HBO Max. We should watch that. We should watch uh, what, that. But I'm talking about uh, yeah, he this got black this yeah. black woman. Mm. She's gonna be the Good Trouble. Yeah, she's she bringing it. Yeah, she is. She's already the me that. They had some going on another uh, a few months ago where she wasn't even supposed to open the statement. She bought the open the statement and kept mm-hmm. going with it. And they had to shut mm-hmm. the fuck up. Mm-hmm. I was like, yeah. I'm trying to tell you, man, they better stop playing on black women. They putting the spotlight Shit. on black women and they showing them, hey, we ain't nothing to play with. They see Shit. black women as like this helpless uh, 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 welfare queen type Shit. thing. Man, Shit. what's that lady name? Um, uh, uh, Harry White. What's her name? Um, Her- uh, Megan? Yeah, Megan Markle. She, man, she giving them work for their money. And uh, what's her name? I'm so proud. What's her name? Uh, Michelle Obama. Yo, Michelle Obama, she was the first black woman show them we is nothing to play with. Megan got somebody right now, which most of us in the know knew. 
Mm-hmm. She just stayed in England. They were gonna kill her. They yeah. were setting her up to say, "Yeah, committed suicide." Yeah, she didn't, they couldn't killed. take it no more. Yes. Yeah, set it up like yeah, that. Yeah, she and would killed her baby and killed herself. That's what they're gonna say. Mm-hmm. And Harry would have told him, "No, they killed her." Cause just like when his mama died. Yeah, yeah. you guys killed, killed, killed her. Mama. They gonna say she killed the baby and committed mm-hmm. suicide. They getting rid of both of them. Condoleezza Rice was everything that they wanted. She was controllable. They she did everything she was supposed I to do. I used to like her. Mm, exactly. She was digestible. But now Michelle Obama, she changed everything. That's why they had all Condoleezza those conspiracies Rice was about Republican, her. Republican though. She done, mm, she sold out to the yep. uh, Republican Party. Then Meghan Markle came and she started to show them like, okay, well, I'm not gonna be the traditional stand in line uh royal woman that you want me to be because I'm gonna be myself and I'm gonna be with my husband. And then, yep, there you go. And then what's the name that Kamala Harris came and she was supposed to be that. Kamala Harris shows signs and capabilities of being there, but she just, she be behind the scenes. She waiting on Joe to have a heart attack or asthma attack or something. She waiting. A lot of people wondering, what's up? What's this yeah. first person you don't see again? Where the hell is Kamala Harris? That's a, that's a where's Waldo kind of game. Where is Kamala Harris? This remind me of before you was ever born, mm-hmm. uh, Linda B. Johnson uh, was Kennedy's vice president before Kennedy got killed. Yeah. Guess what they did with Lyndon B. Johnson? What they do with Lyndon B. Johnson? Send him off to other places, other country, keep him out of the spotlight so they don't ever see him. He couldn't stand it. Some people say he had Kennedy got killed too. Yeah, yeah. He wanted yeah. to be president. Yeah. They I, just unsealed some uh, documents about John F. Kennedy. It was so terrible. They had to seal it up until the 90s, but they never released it. It was supposed to be released last year, but they stopped releasing it. But they yeah. had released it yesterday. He was a man who had two men. He had the Texans didn't like him. They wanted Lyndon B. Johnson. Lyndon B. Johnson? Uh, yeah. They wanted uh, Lyndon B. Johnson. They got a lot president. of shit named after him down here. Yeah. And he got killed right here in Texas. And Lyndon B. Johnson he got killed? Killed? Right here in Texas, in Dallas. What, what happened? Kennedy and Oh, okay, okay. But yeah, they I wanted remember. the vice president with Johnson. They wanted Johnson to be president. Mm-hmm. So how can you get him to be president? Have Kennedy ride through him to top down so we can blow his brains out and you'll be president. They, they didn't. It was more than them. They put the devil pot from inside. Mm-hmm. Johnson know who? Johnson know. And I want people to listen to this podcast to know I'm not a racist person. If I don't like you, I don't care if you're red, blue, black, or green, or Asian, mm-hmm. or alien. It's you I don't, you know, I might have a problem with, not the color, because I got black people in the family, white people in the family, Hispanic in the family, mm-hmm. probably some other races in families. My grandma say I'm part, we got Indian in it. Mm-hmm. So it's hard, especially when you travel yeah. around places. I have been everywhere, I've been a few places. Mm-hmm. It's hard to be racist against like, uh, a race of people. Because you can always find a group of people, somebody in that race that you're going to like and enjoy. Yeah. So facts. it's, it's facts, just facts, facts. individual I might not like. Yeah, and I used to think that black people couldn't be racist. I used to be one of those people mm-hmm. that say that black people couldn't be racist. Like being racist. Then again, I feel like you can, because there are some racist. Not against white people. That's one thing I, I'm adamant about. You cannot be racist against white people. The less you know in, a, in travel, uh-huh. That's, you can be discriminatory, you be prejudiced, but like an uh, Indian man, you can be racist against an Asian person, a Mexican yes. person. It only goes back to like power and control. Because like we have the power to, uh, we have the power to change things within the minority community to be minority. But we can't change the system, like the justice system. So we don't, we can't be racist against white people because of that simple fact that we don't control the system. And and here's a system that's been put in place for any of us who's ever born. Mm-hmm. Racism. Uh-huh. Is a tall thing. It's not a born. A baby there you don't go. know there you nothing go. about yeah. color, Facts. nothing about nothing. It's taught. Yeah. It's taught. Whether it's through experience or through a family member. And here's here's something I see a problem. Mm-hmm. And we say, it's taught. Why everybody don't teach the right thing? Mm-hmm. You see some people. But I'm going to go to a foreign though, country first. Mm-hmm. Iran, where they got these people cutting their hair off. Yeah. Afghanistan. Where the Taliban is so backwoodish. But let me ask you a question. What's the right thing? You say they're not teaching the right thing. What's the right thing? I'm going to bring you back there. Mm-hmm. I'm showing you about yeah. the knowledge that people get. Yeah. The Af- let's go with the Afghanistan. I've never been there, but I see some of the people. Mm-hmm. They're so back there trying to keep the women under their control, but they're so illiterate themselves. Yeah. So how a literate person is going to teach someone how to be some? Are you going to be as illiterate as they are? Mm-hmm. So they don't want no new technology. They mm-hmm. want what they got to stay that way. Mm-hmm. So they're teaching theirs to stay that way. Come to America. Yeah. yeah. We came in. They bought us over here as a slave. Yeah. That's See, how they want. It's a mm-hmm. group of them want to keep us that way. Yeah. No matter what you do, no matter what you say, no matter how we feel. Mm-hmm. When I see these Negroes that's there saying that they with him, they brainwash, they brainwash, they mm-hmm. brainwash. Right. Yeah, yeah. We see like uh, black men. Uh, Ain't nothing Stand wrong with, with liking yeah, another yeah. nationality. Yeah. Ain't nothing wrong with liking your own nationality. But, if yeah. you white like white, it's okay. 
If you black, like black, it's okay. Uh -huh. hey, you like that. But understand, there's more than you in this world. If you bleed, ain't no uh, Asian got a different color blood. It ain't that uh -huh. shit. It's yeah. taught to be racist. But uh, they before we get uh, too far, I'll try on the back track. Uh, to back to what we were saying, like, what is good? Because you know how you were saying back over there, they have their women covered up all that. Because to them, that's what's good. To them, that's what's holy. So uh, how can we teach what's good when we don't really know what's good? That's it's, a part of subjective. making it be racist because they're so backwoodish. And they making the women be... But it's only backwoodish to you because that's not your culture. They probably think about the same thing about us because we let our women go whatever they want. Okay, now I'm going to say this to him. Mm -hmm. If you take all the oil out of Saudi Arabia, mm -hmm. what would they have? Um, what would they be doing? Saudi Arabia... Uh, have you smelled the kind of foods that they eat? I don't be racist. They go... Kind of... I'm trying to see Saudi Arabia. They import some mostly oil, oh, yeah. If they yeah. didn't have that, what would they be doing? Yeah. It's a it's a it's a big mansion when I was out in California. A big old brown looking mansion that was in Beverly Hills. I forgot who told me that they had somebody had worked there. Mm. Beautiful from the outside. And don't fact check me because like off the top of my head, like we just speaking off the top of our head, like uh, we are not saying like uh, factually because this all going Saudi, back to racism. Yeah, because people cause, are racist. Because Saudi Arabia might have more imports than oil, but the main point is yeah, that with that oil is the main import. So and so we're keeping I mean, it on racist. Yeah, that group of people don't like Americans. Because Just American, of, period. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But here, here they go, though. They didn't have oil. Um, you, here's an example. I haven't been in there, but the talk was around town. Mm -hmm. Beautiful building from the Saudis outside. Mm -hmm. Somebody that somebody says they had worked there. So you go off inside there. That's the stake that's ever That's wanted. different, though. That's not racism if they discriminate because we're Americans. Like, as black people, they probably might not, they not like us. It don't I matter what color you is as an American. They there you go. So that's not, yeah, you. exactly. So that's not racism. That's probably what black that? discrim discrimination. That, that's it. Okay, now we got we got the same thing happening in America. Right. All right, we got foreigners discriminating against Americans. Don't care what color American you are, yeah, black or white. Simply because you're American. That. And let me go to America now. Muhammad Ali. I volunteered to go to the military. He wasn't going. Mm -hmm. he well, I said fight for this. a country ain't gonna fight for me. Yeah, hey, yeah. Uh, he said this. Mm -hmm. Ain't now one of them over there called me no nigga. Mm -hmm. Not one of them. Mm -hmm. It's you, mother. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. paraphrasing. Yeah, hey, man. Hell, rest in peace to Muhammad Ali. And it goes back to this here about racism. Mm -hmm. It's a group of people. It's some blacks that just don't like you because of what we have been through. Exactly. I mean, what we've exactly. been through, we supposed to like. Just, and you, and that goes back to what you were saying. And that's that one of the biggest fears. That's, it's several fears. And I don't want to be racist, but there's some fears of a white man. Taking their women, I ain't gonna put them in order. I'm just saying, taking their women, getting their money, and reminding them or remembering of how they have treated us. They are afraid if we remember, if they, if we're reminded of how they treated us in slavery, we may revolt against them. They don't want that. Yeah, that's why they took CRT, at critical race theory, Thank you. out of the school. Thank you. Yeah, CRT, critical race theory. And My little sister, she's ten years old. I asked her, did she know about slavery? She was like, no. How, why, how, why are they not teaching you that in fifth grade? And I saw some CRT being in the making here. Mm. And I keep saying, and, and I'm using you there. Your brother told me you was out in the protest a few years ago down there. Yeah, 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 yeah. I could not go. Cause, truthfully, my feet was hurting. I was going through a lot of things during that time. And I wasn't yeah. going up. Yeah, I was always ago. out there about protests. Yeah. But I was on a lot of problems with my feet and all. And, but I was looking at that and I was feeling joy and sadness at the same time. This, mm -hmm. is, this is the sadness I was feeling. For what had happened, the reason that it had happened. A song I'm, I wrote, and I'm like, nobody understands. Mm -hmm. They didn't want to understand what happened. Uh -huh. But for the young black kids, the white kids, the Asians, the Mexicans, all of the young people mixed with the rest of us, these young people, when I saw them protesting, uh -huh. I was so inspired by they seen an injustice done just like with. Uh, when OJ, or Mark, when uh, in California, when Rodney King got beat, and mm -hmm. all these places around the world, Germany and Boston went, went went off. I was like, Boston's a racist place. Germany's a racist place. Why are they going off? Because they're seeing injustice. So it showed me the world had a chance. That's what I saw back then. Mm -hmm. When I saw you, the group that you all was with in Dallas going off protesting, oh, I was so I wish I was richer so I'd go and give all of them. Money and something, mm -hmm. especially those that got injured in the protest. Yeah, people got because, arrested, got lost in the This system. was all nationality doing this. But here's what I saw. You just said it. It goes back to racism. All this goes back to racism because it's taught. Mm -hmm. CRT. This is what I saw that brought that CRT shit up. I'm cursing now. Mm -hmm. I saw it on TV. Oh, 
got our kids out there. This is what I've seen from white people say. Oh, they brainwashing our kids. They got our kids out there in there. What's going to do? Our kids going to come back home with that. That's another big fear of what I said. White folks remembering what they have done. When their own kids come back in their houses and start talking about what the white folks have done to the white police have done to this man and how black people have been mistreated since slavery. Uh, That's the fear I'm talking about. They don't want to be reminded of what they have done. So to stop this shit, uh, I saw it finna happen. The CRT, I uh, saw it finna happen. What they finna do about it? I'm talking about for Texas. Yeah. What the rest of America do, Texas I'm talking about. But look, I want to use that to segue into this next point. You know you a part of critical race theory? Like how do you will? Hmm? How old are you? I'm 67. So you, you're you a part of critical race theory. You live through that. They're trying to suppress your history. Like, do you remember going through that? Like, yes. being a part of critical race theory? Here's like, something I always wondered. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, yeah, my, yeah, yeah. Okay, look. Here's something I always wondered. Uh -huh. Segregation and integration. I and my family uh -huh. and cousins and friends integrated one of the biggest well, wait, wait, high start, school. start from the beginning. Tell them where you grew up at, man. Start, start oh, from the beginning. Oh, Tell West Monroe, Louisiana. Mm -hmm. West Monroe High School. Donald Trump mentioned it when he was down in our city. Talked mm -hmm. about our high school. Mm -hmm. So, here's what I was wondering about. I always wondered about. We integrated that school. That was a predominantly white school. All, that was all white school. We went from all black school. How old were you when you uh, all integrated? How old uh, you? I was, we, we, the ninth grade was the last grade I went to a black school. I was 13 going to 14. Okay. When we okay. had to leave, they was getting us ready for integration. The teachers was getting us ready. We were so young. You know what they that. saying? They was telling us, you finna go to, you got to try twice as harder. You got to work twice as harder. Uh -huh. You got to try to be better than them. Uh -huh. They're going to look down on you. I mean. They was telling you that as teenagers? They were telling us uh -huh. this in the eighth and the ninth. In the eighth grade, they tried to tell us integration coming that we didn't hear. In the ninth grade, because uh -huh. that was the last year I was going to be yeah. segregated. They started telling us in school, y'all get ready. Y'all do this. And I'm going to tell you something that was a shocker. Uh -huh. But one of my history teachers, and he's probably dead now, so I can tell it. Uh -huh. He knew integration was coming. I always wondered, why would a history teacher in this, in this all-black school tell us young kids this? I, I wondered all my life about this. He said, you're finna integrate. It's finna be tough on y'all. It's finna be rough on y'all. If you have a 92% chance of getting away with a major crime without doing any violence to hurt somebody, get some money, do it. I'm telling you this because I'm shocked. Uh, Why is this history teacher telling us students this? If we, black students, uh, have a 92% of getting away with a major crime to get, rich, get some money and rich, uh -huh. Without hurting somebody, do it uh -huh. because life is stacked against you. It's uh -huh. what he said to us. Yeah, and he was right. He was right. So you agree with that? If you have a chance of getting away with it, I'm not saying time to go to philosophy. Uh -huh. okay. Life is stacked against. I'm telling you where we come from. The books that we had was from the white school. They throw down to us. They uh -huh. had the new books. Uh -huh. Integration was going to happen no matter what we do. Oh, integration was signed. Uh -huh. Five, six, seven, eight years before we was integrated, before yeah. we was forced to integrate. Yeah. So, so y'all was forced to, so y'all was Integration to was signed. If you had to go look things up, we was forced in 69. We was forced. Mm -hmm. But it was signed in 60 or something. Mm -hmm. So see how many years it took for them uh, to force 64, it? 60, sounded like 64, 65 after the civil rights movement. 65, 67, 60, Okay, it was signed four or five years before they forced it on us. Mm -hmm. It was forced on us. Mm -hmm. It was forced so on us. So y'all didn't want it? Y'all didn't welcome it? Hell no, but I was thinking something that I had to see when I got grown to see, wait a minute, white folks started this saying, I'm in the front line, my sister's up there talking about, I'm calling my dear, that's what we call our mother. Yeah. And other friends of our neighbor, y'all get out that line, I'm in the front line. Two, four, six, eight, we don't want to integrate. Two, yeah, four, yeah. six, we did not want to integrate. Yeah. We did not want to integrate. Oh. We liked what we had going. Because yeah. we had spirit at the school. Let me tell you, integration did. Uh -huh. This is what it really did. It, I can say it had to happen, but it had to happen. Uh, it come from a predominantly black school to, of a student body of 300. Uh, football team to win, basketball team to win. Yeah. We came from school where when you lose a basketball team, a football team, the whole 
team get a whooping. Mm. That whooping like a paddle or something? Yeah, buddy. I just played sports now. I was in the band. Mm. But I'm from when I was in school. Your team, this team lose a football game like that. They, they ass whooped in front of the student body mm-hmm. with so, a paddle. Did you ever uh, go, like, did you ever ride like an integrated bus? Like, you had to sit in the back or you ever did? Uh, like uh, that? Once we integrated school, well, before, before we integrated yeah, before school. Before integration, did you have any experience like that? Like, no, did you ride? no, no, no. Before mm-hmm. we integrated school. Yeah. We rode all black buses, all black students, Ooh, all black yeah, drivers. Yeah, we yeah. look at we. I live right by the high school. Yeah, we didn't go to so school. Y'all had y'all own everything. Then we would walk to the high school. We rode yeah. the bus to go to yeah, another school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I live close to the biggest high school in the state. All over. We like fuck that school. I wouldn't cuss it. Yeah, yeah, I'm not going there. We want to go to this little bit three hundred student body. Yeah, but yeah. when they forced it on us, yeah. I could walk. To, we were on two blocks from where I live. Mm-hmm. But when we integrated, yeah, police on campus. White boys putting their hands in front of the door before I can get there. Before I can get there, one of my classmates already fighting, so I ain't had to fight. Yeah, that's <laughs> real. Don't they fight? As, as we coming up the stairs to go to one of my one of the first classes, uh-huh. a white boy put his hands across the door and said, "He ain't letting y'all blank blanks in this class." Uh-huh. And uh, Walters is his last name, John uh-huh. Walters. Something. He a little shorter than me. Uh-huh. Before I can get up the steps all the way, Walter started fighting. They were fighting in the doorway. <laughs> so when I got there, shit, all I had to do was walk on by. Uh, <laughs> yeah. They were fighting. Police was in the, in, the, in the hallways, in the classes, during that integration. But after about a couple of weeks, everything settled down. Uh-huh. It wasn't. Here's why I knew it wasn't so bad. I lived there. Uh-huh. I know it's KK there. I uh-huh. fish. I know the areas where not to go. Yeah. Especially at night. Yeah. When also, it, y'all already had a pretty general idea. I had a pretty general idea. I'm from that area. I ain't had a general idea. I fished. I know <laughs> yeah. where the fuck not to go. <laughs> yeah. At 13 years old, my older brother gave me a pistol. Yeah. My mama screamed, you take that from him because my brother said, you take this pistol on his leg. Look at Not for Negro. Uh, like they talk about all this black on black violence. Uh-uh. It wasn't a white boy mess with you shoot it. My brother yeah. gave me a pistol at 13 years old to go fishing. But here's something that I knew. Uh, well, I knew I not to. It, life had to change. Well, I'm not so racist. When we integrated this high school, some of the white kids that I got to know and be friends started telling me stuff like this. Carter, don't go to Barkerville. That's KKK area. Carter, you be careful when you go to over that area. Barkerville, I know it's KKK. Uh I know they were letting me. They weren't telling you nothing new. They were telling me the truth. Yeah. So I know. Here's what the, the ones that were telling me this. Come on, the white kids were telling the you this? The white kids was telling so me this. That's how you knew that they were fucking with you. Like, These that, that was when cool you know you. everybody in race because they got to know me, I got to know them. Yeah. And this is why they tell you. This is why they trying to help you out. Not helping me out because of shit. I'm from, I, my family wasn't rich, wasn't poor, but we wasn't no broke motherfucking family growing up. <laughs> so I ain't the shit out of here. Yeah. But I knew that they were telling me too because I go fishing. Some of these guys, I ain't say, I fish with white boys. Yeah. So I knew all white folks was not. My mama worked for a doctor. They befri- they took me under their wing. Uh-huh. I got to tell this story. Yeah, go ahead. My sister. The, uh, uh, my mama worked for a doctor and nurses, private practice. They always get more peas and stuff to shell, give my mama half, she keep half. Food, give her half, we keep half. But this particular day, particular time, they got three bushels of peas. They called my mama to tell her they're going to bring them to her. You shell them, you get half, we get half. Ain't that a good idea? Because peas is fresh and do. Yeah. Oh, my mama work for these people. Yeah. My sister answered the phone. My dear, this old white woman wants you. <laughs> mm. Just like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Didn't yeah. put her hand on receiver. Just like that. This nurse takes me to her house. Let me fish with her rod and reel. Takes me in a car. Buys me stuff. Treat me like her son. Yeah. She done heard my sister. I'm always at the doctor's office with my mama. Especially on days I ain't got to go to school on the weekend. My sister yeah. don't even go there. I can go there and they pay me just to sit there. I watched my mama was a maid, but my mama taking blood pressure from all the black patients. Who you, the colors had to come through the backside, the whites come through the white, through yeah, the front. Yeah. My mama was a maid. She cleans up the office, but she had been there so long she would take their blood pressure. And I'm gonna say this, and she's dead. My mama not even draw the blood from her. Yeah. She was at that long. But when the woman heard my sister say this white woman, she came. The white lady, Miss Faye Everett, came out head nurse. What's her name? Faye Everett. Faye Everett. Okay. Came out in a brand new. Burek, I helped take the bushels of peas out. My memory is so fucking good. You remember my, every day. My day. mama's out there too. My sister's standing back. We all comes out there. Miss Faye Everett looks at me, 
gives me a $10 bill, mm. looks at my sister and walks off getting the car, slams the door, and bags like we're at the dead end street. Ah, we're on the dead end street yeah, now, yeah, and she bags out. That's three bushes mm. feet. I does this. I ain't gonna ask you to think what I did. I does this him. Look at my sister and say this him. She did that because she heard everything you said. My mm. sister said, I don't care. I don't care. She didn't cuss nothing. Mm. My mom said, I don't care. So what she I care. You think she cared for real? Didn't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> My sister didn't give a fuck. <laughs> but you know what I did? <laughs> Come do? on. Take that ten dollar. We go, yeah, my mom's going right across the street. Cause we can go across the main street. It ain't a big street, let's be, but we can't say where it come right back. Mm. Take my sister over there, get change for the team, give her five, I get five, we buy something to eat together, go back across the street. Mm. I'm, where's your brothers? My brother, my brother's way older than us. They go. Yeah. Oh, oh, me, me and my sister grew up like my sister's about a year and a half older than me. Yeah, okay. She treat okay. me like she my mom. Oh, see, so y'all like speaking span. Like, I'm like, like twin. Here. But wait, I got a brother that's a year older than her. They closer to me and her brother. They get in shit together. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. They keep me out of shit. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling my sister, you see, she heard everything you said, but this is my philosophy. I love this white woman. Mm -hmm. They yeah. treat me like I'm their son. Mm -hmm. But ain't nobody come between me and my sister. This ten dollars she gave us, yeah. we splitting this. I don't care how. If she'd have shut the fuck up, we'd have got twenty. Oh yeah. Oh, me and my sister went to rake some. Me and my sister went to do some yards in the wintertime. One, we did rake one yard, mm. made about eight dollars, seven, eight dollars. Somebody else asked us to do their yard. We went to start to raking their yard and thought about shit. We finna have a party. We got money to buy the ice cream, the cake, the cookie. Let's go. Y'all uh, working. Y'all, uh, like neighbors white. was, uh, your neighbors I would, no, I would, our neighborhoods ran together, so we yeah. went to some white folks' neighborhoods oh, and told okay. them, because yeah, yeah. uh, they knew us. So, they, was, were they white or were they black? They in the black neighborhood? I'm going to get some money from white folks. Wait, so, okay, so during segregation, during time in 1960, Well, let me slow down. My mama worked for the number one doctor right downtown, across from the police station. Uh -huh. Coney Island hot dogs are right across from the police station. So y'all's town didn't really have much racial tension like Coney that? Coney Island had colored entrance. They had a white entrance. Mm -hmm. Because who my mama worked for, the number one doctor, mm -hmm. we can go in any entrance mm -hmm. we want to. And I never yes. went through the colored entrance. I went through the never? white entrance. Never? Went never went through the colored entrance. Because something else, too. My grandmother mm -hmm. had a lot of land somewhere. I don't know what she got. She gave all her kids pieces of land, except the ones with California. They sold there. Mm -hmm. My uncle... Lived right across the street from my grandmother, had his land over there. Mm -hmm. He had a gas station, a couple of little pumps. He had a little garage where you drive over and go underground to take the oil out. I didn't understand the significance of a Negro having a gas station in that area. Mm -hmm. My daddy had a garage a couple of blocks away where he was the number one mechanic in the area. He used to work for these car dealers sometimes, but he had his own shop. Yeah, He was to go to Detroit or Chicago with an 18-wheeler and bring cars back. Every time he bought them cars back, he always bought us a car on that truck too. Oh, he, gave, he gave you a car? No, no, no. Every, my daddy would, my daddy had his own garage. The yeah. white folk would bring him their cars to work on because he didn't like working with nobody. But he would work for them sometimes. Yeah. But when they wanted him to go and drive from Louisiana to them auctions in Detroit and Chicago, Ooh, like they come here. Yeah. Every time my daddy That's made it understood, job. when he go there to them auction to get them them cars, uh -huh. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That he get them seven, he buying his own car and putting on there. He yeah. always bought a car back with him. For no, he bought, mom, mom. My daddy didn't buy, every time he came back, he always bought a car back with us. My daddy'd be gone for two weeks at a time, but he always bought a car back. Yeah. To yeah. sell. Yeah. Oh, he we didn't have Making so many money. We done went through so many cars. He we had a beer that was uh, lime green. Oh, let's keep this. My daddy wasn't keeping shit. He was selling. <laughs> he was supposed to have us a nice home built. He riding through one day and seen some houses for sale, wooden houses. Yeah. He didn't buy one, he bought two. Houses? Yes. And had, so a move, had a move to our land. Me and my sister was yeah, pissed yeah, the fuck off. How you move up. a house? They wooden houses up off the ground. Oh, uh, okay. He had a yeah. director to, to pick them up and move them. Me and my sister was pissed the fuck off. What he do with them? Did he put them together he moved make it. a big ass My grandmama had gave him some land. He put them both on our land. We lived in one. He rented out one. We was pissed. We wanted one goddamn house nice. Mm. <laughs> he about two. Fuck this shit. Yeah, ran out one. Was making money on Sabah. Yeah, hey, he was an entrepreneur. He, make money. he was an entrepreneur. Yes, he was. He was. Entrepreneur. But yes. we didn't understand. I didn't understand that. I didn't talk. I didn't. My mom used to always tell me this. Don't hate your daddy. Probably just like it. Yeah. <laughs> I've only got two whippers in my life and my daddy. Yeah. Once deserving, once wasn't deserving. Oh, yeah. Two in your whole life? Once. I used to mild man. I felt Once he wanted me to cut the grass and I didn't want to crank the lawn more. I didn't want to touch it. Mm -hmm. He started. My sister hollered, stop. Mm. She made it. Like, he hit me twice. 
with a belt on the leg. My sister hollers, ah, how I cut about 10, ah, <laughs> 11, 12, car, 7, about 10, 11. Oh, my sister hollers, stop. I remember, she's about 12, I'm 10. Mm. I, that, I do that. She cuts, she cuts the grass, she cleans the house. Boys didn't do nothing when I was growing up. What? Um, nothing? Not in our house. Okay. <laughs> the women yeah, did this, yeah, the yeah. men go. And see, I'm the youngest of all of us. Yeah, yeah. So you really have to do much. You're my dad had a garage. My mama wouldn't let me touch no grease. Me and my sister go to this garage and play on them things you jack up and let the air out. Don't y'all hurt yourself. Mm. That's all we play around, but then we got to go home. Yeah. But mm. the yeah, area I was in, my grandmother and I had some land. So in that area, because it was so racist, mm. my, one of my brothers, they going to reform to reform school fighting white boys. <laughs> he would fight. He yeah, like yeah, yeah. he was the size of Carlos, little stocky. Uh, white boy say something to him, he would he fight. Ooh, but we got the the KKK didn't get involved. Man, you know he how didn't care. Them motherfucking niggas. <laughs> they fight white boys. I know, but the KKK. Y'all was scared of the KKK. Let me tell you something. It's an area right down in Louisiana, right uh, now. Uh, I ain't been in nine years. The same place I said the white boy, white boy told me to go to Barkerville. Yeah. I was in Balkanville. I didn't go there but about 10 years ago. Uh-huh. Katrina, uh-huh. the New Orleans Negroes moved to Balkanville. Yeah. I, also I was with my nephew going to get some weed. Uh-huh. Them niggas got trash cans from New Orleans with fire going out there and everything. Oh, trust me. KKK, they get together, hide and shoot and all that shit. KKK know this. You fuck with them crazy motherfucking niggas, they want to hurt you. They ain't man, with fuck your with. ass, huh? They know who to fuck with. The KKK. Hell yeah, KKK who knocked them. They know I'm who talking about back then, though. Uh, back then, let me tell you something about back Y'all then. Y'all wasn't scared of them back then? Back then, my mom was scared. My brother was going to get killed by them. Yeah. They were telling them, they going to kill you, they going to kill you. Oh, before we in the... Are we in great school? No, we ain't even in great school. My brother, that's a, a couple years older than my sister. You didn't have older than my sister. Uh-huh. Them two got in trouble. Oh, that got a picture in there. That didn't go. We at home before we integrated. Right. Mike. Oh, I'm sorry. We at home in the house that daddy done bought for us. We get a knock on the door. This is about the uh, the summer before we integrated. The summer before we integrated. We get a knock on the door. It's the police. Oh, I'm fine. Oh, somebody. The summer we was we was getting ready to integrate that fall. During the summer, we get a knock at our door. It's the police. It's the police door at our door. The police comes to our door and my mama goes to the door. My dad ain't even there. The police tells my mama this. If your brother fucks with my daughter, I'ma kill him. Mm-hmm. What? And who would know his daughter's going to be in my homeroom that fall? Her name is Vicky Campbell. I didn't know who She's white. She's a pretty white. Oh, she's beautiful. Wow. My brother fucked with white boy. Hung out with white folks even then. Yeah. But when the some, so I finna go into the tenth grade. When this police said, "If your son fuck with my daughter, I'ma kill him." The police name is Gus Campbell. I ain't even integrated yet. So we we integrate school that fall. I'm sitting there, and this girl name is Vicky Campbell. My name is William Carter. So we're in the same homeroom. I get to looking at her, and I'm like. She keep looking at me. Get what she said. Are oh, you Charles' brother? Gus Campbell. What's the what's the city name? West Monroe. West Monroe, Louisiana. His name was Gus Campbell. He I'm was a police officer morning, back yeah. in the day. <laughs> Came down, got them house, and her name is Vicky Campbell. Oh my God! He got a um a water sports and bowling. Uh, That's where all the motherfucking police got some. They all are they all with uh, duck diamonds. They all the motherfuckers. Uh, oh, it's some sports. It's a, a, a uh. A, a seafood place there. Uh-huh. Some of my friends, uh, he did now. Everybody know that's the mob that live there. Ooh, Everybody know it's called. Right, better be careful who you speaking on. Be careful who you speaking on. Yeah, we all know who the brother for. Uh-huh. We grow up there. It's called Cassio's uh, seafood. Yeah. Oh wait a minute, wait, hold on now. Uh-huh. The people that my daddy worked for, uh-huh. they had me to get in the car. I'm about eight or nine years old. A white man that I drove for up here. To check to see was I lying about some things. He Googled this here word. Uh, mohair. They had me to get in the car. They kept talking about this interior is mohair, mohair. I don't know what the fuck mohair is. They showed me some compartments in that car. Oh, these are uh, hidden compartments. Daddy just come out of Chicago. Look at these hidden compartments. They, I'm listening to what they're talking about because I used to always go with my daddy at that time when he coming back and listening to the shit. He was talking about shit. I'm listening. Look at these. They showed me I the found Mickey Campbell. 
Huh? I found Biggie Campbell. She was a pretty white girl back in the day. Yeah, she died in 1983. Did she? Yep. For West she Monroe? Married. Yep. I found a picture of Nick. Uh-huh. Let me see her. Oh, how she died? Uh, I'm not sure. It That's Vicky. Yep. They said her dad's name was Gussie Campbell. Her yes, name Gus was Campbell. Gussie. So she ain't lying, huh? Yeah, her brother's name was Gus Campbell Jr. Yep. Let me tell you, last time I saw this girl, I came from somewhere into Louisiana, and she was someone. She said, "Williams, what are you doing?" Think we hugged her. Yeah, she said, "I'm finna get married." Well, yeah, uh, she got married. That's how uh, Alonzo, something Vicky Campbell Alonzo. But she told me this. I'm like, Vicky, you get married? Yeah, I'm just trying out to see how it is. I don't know how long I'll be married though, William. But when she found out I was in her homeroom, she like, William Carter, is Charles your brother? Mm. Gus Campbell, your daddy? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's her. She's a pretty girl. Uh-huh. Oh, let me tell you something in, in this high school. Uh-huh. I'm sitting in uh, some other class. Helen Jones, still alive now, tapped me on the shoulder. That's her, 1971. We graduated in 73. See, she's pretty. The, the picture don't do a see her in person. That's her real hair. This ain't no wig. Mm-hmm. Uh, we sitting in, after integration, I'm in the 10th grade. Helen Jones whispered. Anything I'm sure with Helen Jones. She like Kim Helen Jones whispered in my ear and tells me this. Yeah. This other girl likes you, William. I look over at this pretty ass, not this girl, another blonde haired white girl. Get what I say? Mm-hmm. Uh uh-uh. uh. They ain't finna kill me. Not with this girl. Mm-hmm. Boy, because I'm telling you, KKK was in that area. They, we were scared of them. Mm-hmm. My brother wasn't. That's what mama kept saying. you going to get us all killed. you going to get us killed. Yeah. White boy shouldn't have said nothing to me. Should have called me a nigga on motorcycle. They slow down on the motorcycle. They didn't have these kind of motorcycles that go fast. They had them over scooters. Mm-hmm. My brother was a track star. Nigga! And he'd shoot out and go catch him. He was a track star for the high school. Yeah. He would catch him and hit him and beat their ass. Yeah. I'm telling you, he done went to reform school lots of times for beating up white boys. Unheard of for fighting white boys back then. Oh, he had a game. They were called the Hotheads. He was the leader of them. They say, uh... From high school, Vicky shortly after graduation moved to Los Angeles to pursue an acting model oh. career. She was a very beautiful young woman. Oh, While in LA, you. she met and dated Harry Winkler before moving back to oh. West Monroe, Louisiana. He said she died uh while a uh, water skiing accident. What? Yeah. Cause that's what they do in West Monroe on the rivers. Oh my god, Vicky. Yeah. She fuck with Henry Winkler. Yep. And Gussie Lee Campbell Sr., her daddy died, too. He died in 1996. Oh. Right there. They got the police uniform on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is that police uniform, military? Yeah, that's police uniform. I told you he came in and said, I'm going to get your son fucking with that. I'm going to kill him. Mm. What? And, then I ended up, and this was in the summer before we integrated. Mm. Oh, my God. Look how life is. Look how I'm telling you the truth yeah. about shit. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. He sure got his police uniform on. And told your dad it was a police. Mm. And see... Look how pretty she, you can't tell how beautiful that's the old picture. But see that girl in, per, in person? I see why she my brother liked her. <laughs> but, you know, move on from that. Your music. Your oh. music. How long have you been doing music? How long have oh. you been? Just... I started in music in the band. Mm-hmm. I went in the military. I sung in the military for a minute. Then I got out. Mm-hmm. I, I moved around the country. I went to Seattle. Mm-hmm. I had a group there. Uh, they play lead guitar. They mm-hmm. had a song that I'm going to re-record. Yeah. Lane yeah. Brain Santa. Man, we've been all around. We've been seeing stuff. We've been experienced. That's why I got oh. on the podcast now because I know that Will will give you a story that's going to be true to you about his life. And Here's you another true one. Nothing. You can fact check it out and it'll be true as rain. He just fat checked something. Man, for real, on accident. Group. Yeah, I had looked up, you know what I'm saying, the people he was talking about just to get a glimpse of who he was talking about and I found him. I found the pictures, I found the dates, all of them matched up. Here's a group in Seattle that, I, like I said, a group I messed with. One of the bass players, and this was a family group. Yeah. I met him by accident. A friend of mine that I hung out with, fished with, and we even fished all in Canada and all. Yeah. They was renting one of their, their houses about two doors down from him. He knew I met like music. He took me to meet him. Uh-huh. So we go downstairs, and they got instruments, one the guitar and missing the string. But yeah. they started playing and played good. Uh-huh. So I decided, shit. We was this? In the 80s. Okay, okay. So, okay, yeah, you started earlier. So I decided, let's start a group, because I was going to manage them. They didn't know I could sing. Uh-huh. Now, a friend that took me over there didn't know I like music, but he'd heard me, but he didn't know I sing like I do now. Yeah. And they really didn't know I sing. Oh, the guitarist had went to L.A. to uh, Marvin Gaye uh-huh. and sent him to school, and somehow met him, heard him playing, and sent him to school to play for him. 
Ooh, the boy shit. went to okay. L.A. Yeah. And guess what he did? What did he do? Oh, he was a good bass player. I mean, the group, two of them played lead. This boy played the bass, but he, uh, Marvin Gaye liked him so much because he was playing by ear. Yeah. He was sitting in school in L.A. The boy got homesick and after a few weeks, a month or two. They told me the story because I met him in Seattle. The boy quit. Wow. Came back to Seattle. Got homesick. Oh, okay. Got homesick. Uh, Marvin Gaye done took him to LA, got him going to press. Couldn't stand it. Couldn't stand it. Quit. Life. He couldn't came stand back to life. Seattle. Oh, here's another thing. But nah, but look, as a musician, do you think you'd be like that? Because remember how we be doing shows over mics and all that? You said it was a lot for you. We was doing some uh, studio time late at night. We wake up early. But I was also morning. doing this in the daytime. I exactly. burned on both ends. I was detailing cars all day long. Exactly. It'd be and hot. Going all night long. long. How you so, do you think you got to be the same way? Oh, I'm ready because I'm pacing myself mm-hmm. now. There you go. That's a good way to say that. Uh, oh, mistaken identity. Let's talk about that. That song did not get enough recognition. I really wish I would have dropped it when it came out. Uh, that was the first time. song I did with your brother. And yeah. that song. Man, that song was. That good. song took two weeks of practice and practice. Uh-huh. Let me take eight to sometimes 10 hours a day for mm. that one song. Because mm. I'm going to say it, I love your brother to death, but mm. boy, when he first started with me, I looked at him that like, show. what the fuck is yeah. that? Yeah. Now, this yeah. is what I'm saying again. Two weeks straight, six to 10 hours a day on that one song. Yeah. We ain't never put that much work on one song. Never. Mm. But once he did that one song, let me show you what I know he had it. You was here. Uh-huh. I was sitting over here in his chair. I get angry about shit sometimes for no mm-hmm. reason. Uh, your brother was laying over here on the floor doing his music, and you had in-house studio. We were doing it in the closet. Yeah. And you was over here doing your music, uh, doing, getting the studio ready. And I heard your brother, brother doing some lyrics, and I was sitting in that chair, and I'm like, I don't know if I like this. This uh-huh. is after that first song. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Woman Like You. Woman Like You. And I heard him yeah. writing this lyric, and I heard him repeating them. And I'm like, I don't know if I like that. Uh-huh. But when that boy went in that closet and did that on that track and uh-huh. came back out, this is what I said to myself. Yeah. I'm not going to tell nothing about it writing this music. That shit is tough. Uh-huh. I like that. Uh-huh. It wouldn't have changed it. It's what he was writing. He was just, he was still working on it. Yeah. Sometimes, I don't like that. I'm, like, I'm still working on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-uh. yeah, yeah. I don't like, work on it. Yeah, yeah. Work on it. Work on it. Work on it. Because when he got to working on it and he went there, here's something I know about your brother. Yeah. Your brother come from each other, but here goes something with me too. You see, I, he's like now, he got a son. You ain't even trying, because I just, I'm still fucking around with it. But uh, once that microphone, yeah, we get ready, yeah. he does just like me. When we put the headphones on, uh, it's another world. Yeah, it's passion, another. that mind oh, gonna go in. And let me tell you this too. That mind gonna go in. Look at that one performance we did. Uh, That's natural. Facts. On that stage, facts, you know facts. people are paying. To, people want to be entertained. Exactly. That's why you watch football, basketball. Mm-hmm. You ain't they, you ain't just watching motherfucker play for you. Want to see a motherfucker entertain mm-hmm. your ass? Facts. So either facts. we doing the violence mm-hmm. or we doing the singing. Mm-hmm. You could be the always used to tell us this here growing up. Mm-hmm. Cause I was in the band. They used to always tell us this here too. You could be the ugliest motherfucker in the world, but if you could play an instrument or sing, you can get all the girls. Uh-huh. Amen. Uh, that. That Amen. Is, that is a fact. Amen. That. That's Look at Ed Sharon. Ed Sharon. You know who that is? Ed Sharon? Who? Ed Sharon? <clears throat> he a singer. Name. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think he Irish or something. I've heard the name. I have to think of see his picture. But yeah, so out of all your songs that we haven't released or that we will release, what's your favorite? What's your favorite? Uh, you know I got to say... Uh, yeah, let me know. You got a lot. You got a lot. <laughs> don't okay. worry, I got to say, because everybody... Because you know why I like Don't Worry? Why you don't like Don't Worry? Because it's from the heart, from the soul. I felt that. Don't my worry. family. That's probably my family in that song, man. Yeah, yeah. Talk, talk about Don't Worry a little bit. Where'd you get that uh, idea from? Let me tell you why I don't worry. Some of the worst haters in your own family, even to this day. Mm. My sister don't like me mess with this music. She don't want me spending my money on nothing. She's just so protective that way. Yeah. One of my nieces, I keep telling her, has she heard me something? No, she won't listen to it. Uh-huh. She won't even listen to it. My other family member ain't listening to it. Why? They just they just don't believe in the dream? I got a nephew who got a $700,000 house here, and they say they're offered him a million dollars for it. He ain't sold it yet. I ain't even talking about him, but yeah. he's still a nephew. Yeah. Uh, years ago, my sister was in town, and she had to leave, and I was going to go sing at a church, so she had to leave. So my nephew came to the church, and he said this. When you went up there to sing, he said this now. I'm quoting. His name is Don. When you went up there to sing that to sing, I put my head down like my uncle finna sing what kind of song. Uh-huh. 
Uh-huh. Say when you hit that first note with your mouth, I was hollering, "That's my uncle! That's my uncle!" I didn't know you could sing. Uh-huh. That's what he told me. Yeah, they don't. Here's something: sometimes your family will be the hardest on you. Uh-huh. You don't never grow up to them. When I'm talking about family, sometimes your friends. My brother Bobby Wayne Carter. I'm using him for example. You don't know him. Uh-huh. Carlos is a little stock here. They always at his funeral. They were saying this, and I was in such shock as how to whip this nigga's ass, but I, I shouldn't have because uh, he grew up with Bobby. Yeah. They were talking about, oh, Bobby was good in this him. That ain't the Bobby I know. Oh, Bobby Wayne Carter did this. That ain't the Bobby I know. And I kept hearing some of them in such shock because uh, he grew up with Bobby fighting and all that shit I told you about yeah, fighting white yeah, yeah. Bobby would have a leader of the goddamn gang, the hotheads. Uh, they were fighting for the community. He was leading the gang, the hotheads. He was the leader of the gang. Yeah. I seen, I'm out there on the playground one day, and I see my brother shoot by me. He's a track star. But then I see the captain of the football team running after it. Uh-huh. My brother shoots into our grandparents' house. This nigga know you better not go inside that house, boy. If you go in the house, you're finna get killed by this family. Uh-huh. He went to the steps and stopped. This boy's six foot the quarterback. It was a white boy? No, nah, it was a nigga. Uh, I'm yeah, telling you, I'm man. on the playground in our neighborhood. My yeah. brother shoots by me and runs to our grandmama's house, but this six two, six foot quarterback runs behind and gets to the steps of my grandma's house and stops. And started saying, I'm going to kick your mother, I'm going to beat you up, you know, saying something. Yeah. My brother done started to fight. And so I asked him later on, what happened? Oh, uh, he was talking shit to me and I had to hit it. What? Uh-huh. Look how big he is. Yeah, but I still had to show him how tough I am. He can't just talk shit to me. Yeah, but you took out running, yeah, because I knew he couldn't catch me. Yeah. My brother was that kind of nigga. I had to show how tough he is, but he knew to run. Yeah. <laughs> but what did what he do when he saw him the next day? That nigga know he hit my brother and my family gonna kill him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah oh, the kid. same brother. My brother do some shit. It's gambling shack down in our neighborhood. Mm. I'm at home. And we live on a dead end street. We hear all this commotion up on the corner. My brother got a Mustang. He done pulled up and stopped. So we running up there. Mm. I, when, as soon as I get there, I'm about 13 and a half, 14. Mm. These grown up. My girl cousin, I see her grab a Coke bottle and hit the brick and break and holler, come on now. Mm. By that time, hey, she hit the brick with the bottle. She hit a brick. She mm-hmm. grabbed a coke bottle. She breaks it on a brick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's my brother, my oldest brother, getting out of his '66 Mustang. He in between. He was ex marine. My girl cousin there. Well, what I'm, year was it? I don't know. Yeah, '66 Mustang. It, Damn. But I think it's a year past '67, '68 though. He bought it new though. Mm-hmm. He went to Detroit to get it. Mm-hmm. But anyway. Mm-hmm. This is what I saw when I get there. I'm, I'm in high school. I'm in the 10th grade. I see my girl cousin breaks a Coke bottle. Uh-huh. My brother getting out the Mustang. My other brother, Bobby Wang, is there. And some of my other relatives on the side. Uh-huh. And that's when I hear my brother say, you cut him again, I'm going to shoot you. Uh-huh. My brother done started this shit. <laughs> he done started yeah, this shit. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. around the corner. They started way around a block away. They gambled and brother and lost a bit and took the money. And oh, Lord. Oh, look at him. It's a family fight, though. All yeah. his family there, oh, all so, our so family there. He took the money from the family? No, him and this nigga in a gambling shack, a whole lot of uh-huh. So him and his brother, this nigga, he wins. My brother jakes the money and go to take off. They start a fight. Uh-huh. They fight from around at the gambling shack all the way to on our street. Mm-hmm. When our family see it, his family already had saw it. And they coming, then our family coming. Yeah, oh, it was a family against family fight? This nigga. You let that cut, fight? I'm 14. I ain't get, I ain't, I, when I get there, I'm telling you what I saw. My mm. brother bleeding when I get there. This nigga done cut it. Mm. That's when my brother gets out with a pistol, say, you do it, come this way again, I'm going to shoot you. Mm. But my girl, the cousin, I broke a ball. I'm talking, come on, motherfucker. Mm. I'm 14. Oh, I'm yeah. getting, you know, they all grown. I'm like, what's going on here? But then I found out my brother done damn it and the money mm. and got families yeah, like, against family in this shit. Mm-hmm. Oh man. But it's just it's part of growing up. Wars. It's a fucked up family, you know, fucked up part of life yeah. you go through. Yeah. But it's family thing. Yeah, but, but I wrote, some family wars. Hell yeah, that shit. That's why together. I wrote that song though. Don't worry. Don't worry. Because nah. your family can be the worst and hardest on you sometimes. Like for example, again, got jumped on at my oldest brother's funeral by my niece and nephew. Uh. Why, why? I don't know now. Uh-uh. But I wrote that song about don't worry, because your family could be the worst to you. Mm. Now, don't get me wrong. They could be good to you, or they could be the worst to you. It's how you deal with it. Okay. So how long did it take you to write? I that know song? It about inspiration. I'm too. serious. Yeah, I, could, yeah. I could sit down and write a song, and your brother, too. And we could sit down right now and write a song, and be ready to record it the next day. So how long did Don't Worry take? I think I was there when he was writing Don't Worry. You I probably was. I think I wrote it that day. Only thing we write a song is, 
Yeah, I'm about 20 minutes. I could write a song. Yeah, just, if I fuck with a song, I could write it with the beat and be ready to go. And then you know, pass somewhere. Huh? It is. What's the, I write it to the music. I'm ready to go. I was just mm. getting the vocals together. Don't worry. Mm-hmm. This shit. Your brother's supposed to be on that song. He was right. Yep. But he, he kept thinking he was gonna mess it up. Mm-hmm. Cause he was doing a lot of profanity at the time. Yeah. I don't want no profanity. And on ultimately, that song. yeah, yeah. Cause that that song right there is a clean, nice, motivational song. It help you clear your name as the. You know a lot of his songs now ain't got a lot of profanity in there. The ones we got now, he ain't singing a lot of profanity. Mm-hmm. He done got good though. Yep. Uh, now here's the thing: I want to do some live shows, especially yeah. with him. This old and young combination ain't you don't see that yeah. old man, young boy performing together. Back. You don't see where's the come? Where is it? It's the act. First, the music is good. It's the mm-hmm. act. Like I said, back to what we're talking is about. Good. It's the act. The performance is good too. We want to make the people happy mm-hmm. and enjoy. When they leave from there, oh, let me tell you what my sister said. You didn't get to go. Yeah. They filmed something. Mom, what? Carlos can dance, huh? Mm. I just saw some of the footage. Carlos would dance some kish. I didn't know he could dance like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But see, I got a video with me and him. She haven't really watched it. Oh, yeah, don't worry, because whenever we start recording music and start putting videos out for real, yeah, that's when everybody going to start jumping on the bandwagon. Now, he'll go well if we give you credit. It takes team play to do something. Nobody can make it long. Mm-hmm. The right team. It takes the right chemistry. Mm-hmm. And right now, we got the right team, the right chemistry. The way we're going right now, if you, me, and your brother can stay on the same road, the road can be bumpy. Gonna have some curve, mm-hmm. but we can take a breath and don't argue. Like me, I'm trying not to never argue. Well, I'm trying to catch myself because I can argue with. Mm-hmm. That's what I had to do with Bobby Wayne Carter when he would teach me life. Everything he told me, I know this, I know this, I know this. Then he had to explain to me, I know you know this. But life is like a puzzle. If you put the wrong pieces in this puzzle, will it work? Right. And when I heard him tell me that, I thought about it. Let me slow down. This is my brother. Let me show, see what he's trying to show me. But I have learned something though. My own brother showed me so much, but in the end, he turned on me. That's something I never want to do to nobody. I, I mean, money, yeah, money made him change. We ain't got nothing. We talk about having Seven Eleven, gas station, a pawn shop. Soon as we get the money, soon as we get the money, guess what he want to do? Mm. Let's get some go karts, some four wheelers. Let's yeah. go to Canada. Let's go skiing. Let's get. Oh, you let's, did all that. This motherfucker. You've been all over the world. I mean, you've been all, all over America, world. huh? I haven't. I haven't. I've been a lot of places. But I mean, he bought toys. Mm. Toys. What would you vacation. rather do with? Huh? What would you rather do with? Well, here's go one example. During this time, I got a brother in prison. Mm. I want him out. Mm. Don't get me wrong. He living like a king in prison. Yeah. We had one time, we didn't think he wanted to get out. At one point in time, I was going to Sears, uh, J.C. Penney's. That's who had it. And, and once a month, Spending about a thousand dollars to send him clothes and then go send him cash. About once a month. You send him clothes in jail? Huh? You send him clothes in jail? I could pick out the clothes and send them right out of Walmart. I write out JC Penney's. They ship it for me right to him. Oh, for real? That's how they get. Oh, this boy had real live shit. You can only send certain things. Mm. But believe me, he had real live shit. Anything I could send him, I sent him multiple. I sent him to give to his friends. Mm-hmm. But he was living the life. But here go. Back to that's the life of our You had life. money back then, huh? Mm-hmm. But that's a story for another day. But hey, Will used to flat. He used to have money. Ain't a lot. Will used to be stepping, dressing like, you know what I'm saying? But don't let money yeah. be your motivation because when I was, I'm going to stop at this time. When we was going with this kind of money, mm-hmm. tailored suits. I don't want no tailored suits. We mm-hmm. got to have tailored suits. The life we live in, the banks we're going in, the hotels we're going in. We can't go in there looking like this. You got to go look like, oh, you're right. So we, I had five made. He had about eight or nine made. Oh, mm-hmm. they were nice. The life we were living. I felt guilty about pro- brother in prison and I'm dressing like a millionaire. Yeah. But wait a minute, he's taken care of. Because we money just won't get you out of prison. He was in there for murder. Yeah, at least for he had oh, life. Yeah, he was yeah. in there for murder. So, yeah. so I'm tripping on. Yeah, yeah. But uh, back to this music. Y'all was living large and in charge. And this music you feel. Homeboy here at Banger Boy is a music name. Yeah. I got another song by My Brother and Others. I can feel you in your music. You are so full with your music. I can feel how you have lived. Uh, This song I got. Special guest. Want to do a lot of Mm. writing, recording, hosting, performing. 
What we're doing now is posting. I like that. I'm glad uh -huh. we're posting. That's getting a network, an audience that we couldn't reach. Yeah. TikTok. Guess who's on TikTok right now? Hey, man, who's on TikTok right now? Man? Dolly Parton. Oh, yeah? She you, just you went. Follow her? Huh? You gonna follow her? I would, yeah. Yeah, go, yeah get on your TikTok right now. Because I've seen her. it how to follow all different people. Yep. Uh, I will follow her. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so uh, we're going to wrap this up. Uh, thank you for coming to the podcast. Uh, once again, Mark Carter. Mark Carter, Don't Worry, is out now. Finally here, it's coming soon. We got so many projects. The face of Arlington, we're going to start pushing his brand and, and, and his movement more on Windy More Road. We got special guests coming up. We got a lot of uh, content in store. You know, uh, is there anything else you want to say or get across to the people? Ladies Mark? and gentlemen, thank you all for tuning in to Mark Carter. Don't worry. And I am Mark Carter. And I'm here with Mr. King, hey man, the producer. Hey man. He it's, does a great uh, job. We're a great team, me, him, and his brother. And we will hear more from us. Uh, a hey lot man. more. Mon Carter Music on all social media platforms. Uh, we do more road on all social media platforms. We get ready to hear more music on the way for the man's special guest. Thank you. Tune in next time. Oh, what's up? You finished? That was up. I appreciate you for paying attention. You know what I'm saying? Staying connected with me. And uh, make sure you check out episode three. It'll be more physical content instead of audio. I just want to try something different because um, why not? <laughs> Thank you for tuning in. And uh, catch me next time on episode three of Let's Start a Podcast. Thank you.